Dit is Papa Alpha 0 Echo Tango Echo voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag 20 november 2016. Dit is het bulletin van zondag. As always in weekends, our bulletin is in the English language. Today we have some news from WIA in Australia and next to that we have some Morse code. Only on Sunday evening we have an SSTV image in PD160 with all details visible. On Monday morning we have the same image but then in the usual PD90 format. From Australia, this is VK1WIA and the weekly WIA amateur radio news service. Interference source tracked down. Singapore's driverless trains began acting strangely, including the loss of communications and their emergency brakes automatically being activated. The interference on the circle line was in September and then again in November. After studying train logs, almost all incidents were near one particular train. It was tested and found to emit interference to nearby trains and the trackside signalling system. The rogue train was taken out of service while investigations continue. In other interference news, but this closer to home, just what was the motive of this jammer? We don't usually talk about the very rare incidents of antisocial behaviour on our bands, but this particular practice caused upset and may be worthy of an alert to all. Seems a computer-generated voice was used to disguise the person involved who used a false call sign. Get off this frequency, you are causing QRM, the voice said oh so impolitely. It was very unusual and quite disturbing, a bit like out-of-space aliens. A quick routine check found that this was not a valid claim, so the motive behind the well-planned action still remains a mystery. Dutch regulator stops ham radio call publication. Veron reports the Netherlands Radio Communications Agency has stopped the publication of the Dutch call sign list. It appears the agency is citing the Data Protection Act as an excuse for the ending of the service, which will occur sometime this week. With that story ringing in our ears as I leave you this week, what better time than to remind you now? The WIA's very last call book is available now. Just visit the bookshop on wia.org.au. While the world is thinking the planet Mars will be the next space goal, an influential scientific media outlet has told how amateur radio is for many the gateway into science and engineering. It explains that NASA astronauts began taking compatible transceivers with them on the Shuttle Radio Experiment, or SARX, and follow on with the International Space Station to be part of the ARIS program. The National Geographic Channel, in a video program called Before Mars, has a teenage girl, Hannah, with a twin sister, June, determined to talk to an astronaut aboard the International Space Station with an old ham radio, you guessed it, found in the attic. Before Mars describes amateur radio's appeal as that it remains free, non-commercial, and largely organised and controlled by users, and that it allows people to communicate with others all over the planet, and even in space. Worldwide Special Interest Group's Final Frontier. A particular telescope, an SST, achieved first light in February 2011. Then, in 2013, the US Secretary of Defence and Australian Minister of Defence signed an MOU agreeing to relocate this space surveillance telescope from the White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico to Harold E. Holt Naval Communications Station in Western Australia. After the move, SST will be owned by the United States Air Force but operated and maintained in Australia. It will be a dedicated sensor in the US Space Surveillance Network, the SSN. Currently the SST program is developing enhanced small object detection algorithms, a new advanced wide field camera, a faster search operations in preparation for relocation to Harold E. Holt Naval Communications Station. SST has been prolific in observing asteroids, contributing to the discovery of more than 1,300 new asteroids and providing more than 5,500,000 asteroid observations to the international community via the International Astronomical Union Minor Planet Centre. The telescope is also supporting the astronomical community by collecting data on behalf of the Large Synoptic Space Telescope Consortium and NASA Orbital Debris Program Office. Worldwide Special Interest Group's ILLW. ILLW gets a new country. 
The 20th annual International Lighthouse and Lightship Weekend has a new country with a registration of the Tamas River West Lighthouse in Pancivo, Cereba. This old structure provided vital navigation on a bend in the picturesque Danube River and will be put to air by Alexander YU1CA, a regular portable operator. He is the latest to join nearly 80 registrations, including two light ships received so far from 18 countries. See them all for August 1920 and pass reports at the dedicated website illw.net. Worldwide special interest groups, radio amateur old timers. Loretta gets a ham license at 91. The Athens Daily Review reports that Loretta Smith, KG5, QCH has achieved her amateur radio licence at the age of 91. Inspired by Pastor George Yaga, W5BRG at the Harbour Baptist Church, Loretta decided to pursue her ham radio licence. Yaga spoke on his experience serving communities in times of disaster with his knowledge of ham radio communication and Loretta knew that she could provide the same help in Gun Barrel City if she was certified. She worked with the activity director at Cedarview Place to understand the process of becoming a certified and three other residents decided to join her in the course. From 91 to 93. In Canada, CBC News reports that radio amateur Merle Taylor, VE1VCI 93, still practices Morse code in her basement outside of Antagnish, Nova Scotia. We might live in a world where knowing how to write code is gold, but for the 93-year-old Merle Taylor, there's only one code, Morse code. Merle learned Morse code at 20 when she signed up to help Canada at the war effort. Her wartime job was to teach it to pilots through the British Commonwealth Air Training Plan. There were 59 air bases built across Canada to accommodate the boys from England to Scotland, Ireland, New Zealand, Australia and Canada, and it was that group of boys that I taught Morse code to, she said while sitting in a basement, where she still taps out Morse code. It's a signal that will get you through because of the sharpness where a voice just couldn't.
Daily Minutes zijn dagelijks vanaf ongeveer 1900 uur te beluisteren via PI2 NOS. De uitzending wordt een dag later om half elf ochtends herhaald. Ken jij misschien PA5 ROB? Bedoel je die gast uit Zaandam? Ja. Die vaak op de camping staat daar bij Apeldoorn. Jazeker. Die altijd op de camping s'avonds laat met de kat gaat wandelen? Inderdaad. Nee, die ken ik niet. Dit is papa Alfa 0 Echo Tango Echo. Die ken ik niet.